If your toddler has been diagnosed with autism or is waiting for a diagnosis, you're going to want to pay attention for the next 60 seconds. Happy Ladders is parent-led early autism therapy that empowers you, the parent, to teach your toddler essential developmental skills through play. Studies have shown that the parent-led model is highly effective while eliminating frustration over long wait lists or the worry about losing precious developmental time, all without the disruption of people coming into your home. Happy Ladders includes activities that target 150 essential developmental skills every toddler needs, as well as assessments in four different developmental areas. There's also an exclusive community of parents just like you and professional coaching to ensure success for both you and your toddler. To learn more, get a free trial, and take advantage of an exclusive limited time offer for my listeners, visit happyladders.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-L-A-D-D-E-R-S. Use the code THEAUTISMDAD at checkout to save 50% off the monthly membership. Plus, get a free one-on-one session as well as access to the Tantrums and Meltdown mini course. This is a limited time offer, so act now. If your toddler has been diagnosed with autism or is waiting for a diagnosis, you're going to want to pay attention for the next 60 seconds. Happy Ladders is parent-led early autism therapy that empowers you, the parent, to teach your toddler essential developmental skills through play. Studies have shown that the parent-led model is highly effective while eliminating frustration over long wait lists or the worry about losing precious developmental time, all without the disruption of people coming into your home. Happy Ladders includes activities that target 150 essential developmental skills every toddler needs, as well as assessments in four different developmental areas. There's also an exclusive community of parents just like you and professional coaching to ensure success for both you and your toddler. To learn more, get a free trial, and take advantage of an exclusive limited time offer for my listeners, visit happyladders.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-L-A-D-D-E-R-S. Use the code THEAUTISMDAD at checkout to save 50% off the monthly membership. Plus, get a free one-on-one session as well as access to the Tantrums and Meltdown mini course. This is a limited time offer, so act now. Hey, what's up, folks? Uh, My name is Rob Gorski, and you're listening to the Autism Dad podcast. Uh, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to tune in today. Uh, I know that there's a lot going on right now, and everybody's lives have been turned upside down. Uh, Our lives here are, are no exception to that. Uh, what I wanted to do was just give a kind of a brief update as to how we're sort of um, managing, I guess. And and, and then uh, I sat down with Emmett. Emmett came all the way up to the second floor to uh, to uh, to talk to us about his experience on lockdown and some of his concerns and, and things like that. So uh, right after this commercial break, uh, I'll come back and talk about kind of what's been going on, and then we'll have Emmett on uh, a little bit later. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Autism Dead is brought to you by Mightier. Mightier is a fantastic program out of Harvard Medical and Boston Children's uh, that uses a wrist strap heart rate monitor and video games to help your child learn to emotionally self-regulate. That means fewer meltdowns. Um, It works for any kid because it's biofeedback. Uh, for kids. And it, so it works for anyone. Uh, but it's especially effective in kids who are on the autism spectrum. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, kids on the autism spectrum can have a more difficult time uh, with emotional self-regulation. Uh, my kids are no exception to that. And and what this does is it, is it finds an engaging way to to teach them to recognize the feelings in their body, their emotions, and, and it rewards them with better gameplay by, by keeping those emotions in check and calming themselves down and keeping their heart rate in, in, a, in a certain place. It's, it's, it's brilliantly simple. Uh, it's proven science. They have proven that it reduces meltdowns up to 60%. That's good for the whole family. When your child is less stressed out and they're not experiencing distress, they're happier. You know, when, when they're in a better place, as parents, our stress level uh, is lower. And and so it's a positive thing for the whole family. It's fun. It's engaging. Uh, my kids love it and they offer a 30 day free trial. So there's no risk. You can give it a try. If you don't like it, you can just send it back. Uh, you can find out more information and read about my journey with my son uh, using this program uh, at the autismdad.com forward slash mightier. That's the autismdad.com forward slash mightier. I know that we are currently in the midst of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and and most of us, all of us really should be on lockdown. Um, I know it's a lot. And so I, I just wish you guys the best. So, uh, all right. So it's about 
uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time on March 20th. Uh, and I just figured that I would do sort of a just an update as to how um, myself and my three kids are handling uh, this current lockdown. Um, uh, you know, there, there are, there are quite a few unique challenges that, that I'm, uh, dealing with. Uh, one is, is being a single parent that really ups the challenge. Um, being a special needs parent really ups the challenge and, and having a child in a home who is immunocompromised really, really, really ups the challenge. Um, it, 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 it adds a level of seriousness to this that, uh, it's, it's very stressful. It, it, I I am, I'm very anxious, uh, right now because I'm trying to do everything I can to limit, uh, everyone's exposure, especially my oldest, uh, because his immune system is compromised. Uh, so we have been on lockdown since March 6th. Uh, my son was diagnosed with influenza B. Uh, he was sick and uh, they tested him for flu and he tested positive for influenza B. So we were sort of on lockdown f- for that week as well. And then it just sort of uh, transitioned into uh, the COVID-19 uh, lockdown. And it's it's challenging uh, in a number of ways. Um, I'm the only adult really in the house and lacking that adult contact is really challenging for me. I'm a very social person and uh, I love my kids to death and would do anything for them. Uh, but I've been in a house with them for about two weeks now and oh my God, it's a lot. <laughs> um, it's a lot for them. It's a lot for me. Everybody gets on each other's nerves. Um, some of my kids are very, very sensitive right now. They're very, very anxious. They're very concerned, very frustrated. Uh, you know, we're, we're taking this very seriously. Uh, and that, and that means we're not, we're not visiting family. We're not allowing anybody to come over. Um, I think I mentioned in one of the previous, uh, updates that, um, Liz and I have decided to, to stop visits, uh, until this whole thing is, is done with, which, you know, it's the right thing to do. Uh, under the current circumstances, but it's, it's difficult. You know, the kids miss her. She misses them. Uh, they miss their, their grandparents and their aunts and uncles. And, uh, we're doing video, uh, video calls. Uh, we're using zoom right now cause I use that for the podcast. And so I'm, I'm set up to allow like a lot of people on at one time. Uh, so, you know, we're going to try and set stuff up like that. So everybody can kind of have a get together, you know, whatever, uh, it's not the same thing as being in person, but, uh, it, it's better than nothing, I guess at this point. So, uh, one of the other things that, uh, we are working on or, or struggling with at the moment is, is homework. You know, the, the school that my kids go to is not, they don't have an infrastructure for an online, uh, setup. And then a lot of the kids, um, don't have access to the internet. So even if they were set up online, a lot of the kids wouldn't have access to it. Uh, So what they're doing is they're um, doing what they call blizzard bags. And so every Monday I have to drive to the school, uh, pick up a new packet of of work for the kids for the week, and then turn in the work from the previous week. And I guess that's going to be an indefinite thing at this point. Um, The kids are really frustrated with it because uh, I guess they're seeing big picture right now. And in big picture, homework doesn't matter when you're in the middle of uh, a pandemic and trying to survive. And and I get that. Uh, But it's, it's a requirement. And, you know, I still have to work even though I don't want to, I still have responsibilities, even though I don't want to, uh, or, or want them right now. Um, and, and so I'm trying to get them to understand that, that we all have our part to play. And and one of their roles is to continue their education in whatever manner we can. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's an uphill battle right now. And, uh, and actually what we're going to do is uh, a little bit later, I'm going to have Emmett uh, come on and, and talk to us about how he's feeling during this this whole thing, and uh, it's it's pretty interesting. He's 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 definitely very opinionated <laughs> uh, as to uh, uh, his feelings about 
having homework assignments during this this period of time. But um, you know, I, I think that it's important that we instill a sense of normalcy. Tr- try and make our lives as as normal as we can. This is going to be a new normal. Uh, our lives are probably never ever going to be the same after this, and we have to to help our kids adapt. When, when you have kids with autism, routine change is a nightmare under under perfect conditions. When you're not in perfect conditions, uh, and I don't think perfect conditions really exist, it's it's an absolute nightmare, and it's destabilizing, and it turns their world upside down, and uh, that's sort of what I'm dealing with right now. And I'm sure a lot of you out there uh, who have autistic kids or maybe autistic yourself uh, are dealing with similar things. Maybe work schedules have changed or classes changed or day services or whatever uh, have changed. And and it's just thrown uh, a loop, uh, like a wrench into, into the works and it's, it's thrown everything off. And, and I get that. And uh, I'm trying very hard to be patient with my kids because I know it's not their fault. And I know that this is a lot for me to deal with as an adult with coping skills. Uh, and I can't imagine what it's like for them to be, you know, young kids still lacking a lot of that life experience where you learn how to deal with things like this. So, uh, I'm, I, I really, <laughs> I'm frustrated with the homework stuff just because it's just one more thing that I have to worry about, but I'm, I'm. I'm working to try and get them through it. It's not a battle that I want to pick right now, but it's, I think, I think it's the right thing to do at this point in time. Uh, outside of that, uh, I do have a couple of updates. One, I want to say thank you to Akron Children's Hospital. I love Akron Children's Hospital. Um, I had reached out to them a couple days ago and asked them for help with Gavin's uh, IVIG infusion meds uh, because his, his delivery was late. And, uh, they they responded very quickly and his his meds were out the next day and I'm very very grateful for that guys I, I thank you very very much uh, so Gavin has his infusion meds he uh, uh, he did his infusion today uh, and he'll do another one on Monday and then another one next Friday and so he's he's back on his schedule which helps him because he was really panicking um and then his clozapine that's a very challenging uh, thing that we're dealing with at the moment. I've been talking to Liz about it for a little while now. And the issue with the clozapine, Gavin is schizophrenic uh, as well as autistic. And he has a bunch of health issues. He's, he's a very gentle person. Um, His symptoms of schizophrenia. uh, If you've checked my YouTube channel, you've seen some of the conversations maybe that I've had with Gavin where he, uh, he talks about the missions and stuff that he goes on. And those are his uh, schizophrenic hallucinations. It's very real to him, but it's, only real to him. And, uh, it's, it's, he takes medication called clozapine, uh, which is very, very tightly controlled and it requires blood work before every refill. Uh, for the first six months that you're on it, you have to have a blood work done every seven days uh, and you get a seven day supply at a time. If your if your labs come back, uh, perfect, uh, during that first six months, then you can go to a two week supply and you have lab work done every two weeks. And after another six months of perfect lab work, you can move to 30 day supply. Uh, the problem is not only does he have a compromised immune system, uh, but it, to, to get refills for this medication, he would be required to, to visit a hospital or uh, a local, um, medical facility where he can have his blood drawn. And I just can't, I'm very hesitant to take that risk in exposing him to whatever might be out there. Uh, I don't like doing it anyways, uh, but with the COVID-19 virus, he's at a very high risk and and it's just not worth the risk. And so uh, Liz and I decided that we think it might be best to wean him off of the clozapine, uh, working with his, his doctor to do that. Um, and so I, I, I messaged his doctor. They're willing to, to work with us on that. I have a meeting with him on Monday uh, via uh, video and... Uh, we're going to discuss what the options are. Uh, no one thinks this is a good idea. It's not a good idea. I'm telling you right now, it's not a good idea. <laughs> uh, but considering the risks associated with with him being exposed to something by going out into a crowded place uh, to get lab work done where sick people tend to congregate, that's just, it's a risk that we're not willing to take. 
And so we're going to discuss our options and, and how to wean him off uh, on Monday. So there'll be that. Uh, the problem with that is that he will be unmedicated schizophrenic. And uh, it's different for everybody, I think, uh, who's schizophrenic. Gavin is is going to be... He's going to appear more manic, I think. And we're going to be dealing with a lot. He's going to go on a lot more missions. He's going to be sort of isolated. He's going to isolate himself. And um, his his imaginary worlds, we call them his imaginary worlds, uh, they will spill over into this world. And he's going to have a much more difficult time telling the difference between what's real and what isn't. Um, it won't really affect his daily life because he loves doing these missions. And... Uh, so that's not really going to be a disruption for him. It's not necessarily going to affect the other kids either. Uh, it'll probably hit me harder than anybody else because he's going to want to talk about it. Uh, and he's going to want to let me know what's going on. Uh, we do these things called, we we just call them mission debriefings where he'll sit me down in private and he'll be able to go on and on and on about, uh, the heroic acts that him and his team did to save this universe from the evil bad guys or whatever. Uh, and you know, it, it's, it, it can be a lot to deal with and, uh, it's frustrating for me sometimes, um, because it, you have to strike a very fine balance. You don't want to play into the delusions, but you also don't want to challenge them too much either. And so all I can do is to basically sit there and, and listen. And, and it, it's hard for me as a parent because, um, as I'm listening to this, I realize just just how much he struggles. And that's, that's tough for me to, uh, to deal with. Uh, it's sad for me that he struggles with this type of stuff. Um, I wish it were different, uh, for him. And, uh, so, so that's, that's the one big challenge that we have coming up, uh, over the next few days and, and probably the coming weeks as he, uh, comes off the medication. Uh, outside of that, um, I, assuming that my grocery order isn't canceled, I'll pick that up tomorrow afternoon. I'm not super excited about leaving and coming into contact with anybody, but, uh, it's, it's, it's very minimal contact cause they're just going to load stuff into the trunk and I slide my credit card and that's, that's that. So, uh, it should be pretty safe. Uh, but we need to eat and, um, I think this is much safer than going to the grocery store and trying to navigate that. So, uh, hopefully they won't cancel that order and uh, I'll be able to go pick those up tomorrow. Um, yeah. And, and, and outside of that, I mean, we're just trying to stay occupied. I'm, I'm trying to, to work on life skills with my kids that, that, that I have, I guess, sort of neglected over the years, uh, helping them to, to maybe function on a more independent level to sort of pull more weight around the house. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, sort of play to each of their unique strengths and, um, and use that as a, as a, as a, as a teaching lesson. You know, we're, we're viewing this whole thing as a zombie apocalypse. It's, that's how we're viewing it in my house. Um, we take it very seriously. Uh, but this sort of helps us, helps the kids to frame it in a way that is maybe less scary for them. Uh, and, and so we take whatever precautions we need. Everybody has a role, uh, in, in our survival. And, um, I think it's been, it's been a relatively positive thing so far. Uh, we're only, we're, we're barely into this whole COVID-19 thing. We've got a really long time ahead of us where we're going to be, um, on lockdown months probably. Uh, and, and so it's, it's, it's going to get rough. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sort of climbing the walls at this point. I, I haven't, sat down face to face with a, with an adult in a couple of weeks. Um, oh, and that's, that sucks. Um, but, uh, my kids are awesome. Uh, I feel very blessed to be their dad. It's sort of the, the honor of my life. And, uh, if I had to be stuck in a house with anybody, um, I, I'm glad it's my kids, you know, and I can, I can work on keeping them safe and we can come out the other side of this, uh, stronger and better for it. So, uh, please remember as, as we go forward into this, uh, crisis that we, um, that we take it seriously. There are, there are people who 
are immunocompromised like my son, uh, people who are living with HIV AIDS who are immunocompromised, people fighting cancer, the elderly, uh, people with other underlying health conditions. Uh, these people are all at high risk. And, and what we do today uh, affects tomorrow. And, and social distancing and, and sort of isolating yourself, it, it's absolutely necessary. Wash your hands. Get your information from reliable sources. I'll keep uh, a list of some of the uh, reliable sources that I go to for information. Um, they're, they're public health officials or major hospitals. Um, their information is very sound. It's very uh, realistic. And it is factually, scientifically, medically sound. So I'll, I'll have those in the uh, notes below. Uh, I'm going to take just a quick commercial break. And then when I come back, I'll have my little interview with Emmett. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do that. Uh, he was a little fidgety, but he did awesome, and I'm very proud of him. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. The Autism Debt is brought to you by Probably Genetic. Uh, if you've followed our story at all over the last decade or so, you know that my oldest son, uh, Gavin, um, has a lot of very rare uh, medical conditions. We have been searching for answers over the last about 15 years in order to try and find out, you know, what the root cause of all of his ailments were. Along the way, he was diagnosed with childhood disintegrative disorder, which is a very rare form of regressive autism, uh, epilepsy, common variable immunodeficiency, which means he's basically lost his immune system, uh, Euler's-Danlos, and an extremely rare autonomic disorder that has almost killed him on more than one occasion. The only test that hasn't been done was a test that would, would sequence my, my son's genes. And unfortunately, in our current healthcare system, this kind of genetic test has an extremely long waiting period, uh, upwards of a year. It's, it's most often not covered by insurance, and the costs are, are astronomical. Uh, it can reach upwards of $10,000, and that, that makes this type of desperately needed test inaccessible to families like mine. Thankfully, there is hope. Uh, Probably Genetic is helping me to find the answers to the questions that have long gone unanswered. Uh, Probably Genetic specializes in identifying rare genetic diseases that often go undiagnosed, especially in children already diagnosed with autism, like my son. Uh, they're on a mission to make full genetic sequencing accessible to those who need it the most. They significantly reduce the cost and drastically reduce the wait time. Uh, if you have already had whole exome or whole genome sequencing done and you didn't uh, get an answer, uh, they can reanalyze your existing data. If you don't have access to the data, uh, they'll help you get it from uh, your lab free of charge. So if you're one of the countless people out there in need of genetic testing, visit probablygenetic.com. Uh, you can use the code theautismdad400 at checkout and save $400 off of the genetic testing. So that's probablygenetic.com and use the code theautismdad400 to save $400. All right. So I mentioned uh, in the beginning that I was going to have uh, Emmett come on the show and talk to us a little bit about what life in lockdown has been like for him. So please give my amazing 11-year-old Emmett yeah. a nice warm welcome. <laughs> How's it going, Emmett? Eh, it depends on what you ask me about. Really depends. What I what I wanted to do was just have a little conversation with you, specifically, about what life in in lockdown uh, is has been like. I know that it's been a big big change for all of us, um, and I know that there are some things that have really frustrated you. And I thought maybe we could talk about ways that, in, you know, how, how living through a pandemic and a lockdown like this affects you, how it makes you feel, and, and things that are upsetting you or bothering you. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So, uh, for those of you who are new, we've been on lockdown for about two weeks already because the first week was um, the flu. Uh, flu was going through the house, so we were shut down for that. And then it just sort of 
merged into this COVID-19 uh, thing. So Emmett, you have been home for quite a while now. Yeah. Are you finding it? Are you stressed out? Are you worried? Are you concerned about anything? I'm stressed. Definitely stressed. Um. Oh, <laughs> sorry. That's <laughs> my train of thought. Uh, yeah. A lot of stressful, stressful, stressful things. What's What's got you stressed out the most, Emmett? Well, the fact that the coronavirus is going around like a couple miles from our house. Um, we can't leave our house. And that can be pretty stressful. And another thing is our school has this homework thing. And I know it's supposed to keep our minds working. But at the end of the day, why does it matter? Because we're all just trying to survive this pandemic. Which, going out to the school, even though it's a slight, like, super slight chance that you can get it, it's still a chance that if I had, if I could choose, I would not take. Okay, so you're talking about when um, uh, when I have to drive to the school once a week to drop off your, the past week's work and pick up the current week's work? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. All right. Well, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I, and I sort of feel the same way that you do. However, um, they have it set up in a way that is very minimal contact so that I, I think it's pretty safe. Um, but that slight chance with, um, what, Gavin has the immune system? Yes, Gavin has a compromised immune system. Yeah, that. So you're worried about that? Yeah, I'd break the car just so that we can't go. All right. Um, well, the idea of continuing the schoolwork... I know it's to keep our minds going so that we don't forget what we've learned. Well, there's that, okay? It, it's, it's meant to help finish out the year so that you can pass the grade. Um, but the other thing is, is that it, it helps you to maintain a sense of normalcy in an otherwise chaotic... This isn't normal. Okay. Getting schoolwork isn't normal because normally you'd have help. But you don't have help from the teachers. Uh, just so that everybody understands, the way that their school is set up is they don't have online, they don't have that infrastructure to do online education. Uh, and so what they have is, they call them blizzard bags. And so we go once a week to pick them up, uh, or I go once a week to pick them up, and uh, they get a week's worth of work. And then when we finish it, I bring them back the following Monday, and it's sort of like a drug deal kind of we just pass one off and and grab the new one and it's all done very quickly and so that it minimizes uh, contact on the side of the teachers and the parents you're not allowed to get out of your car so it is a really safe uh setup but i also understand the fear uh or the concern that 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 you have emmett um what do you think should be the solution to help uh, keep you distracted, keep you moving forward in your education while we're going through this, because this is temporary. It, it, may, it may be a lengthy temporary, but it's still temporary, and you still have to be able to pick up and move. Yeah. Um, I was thinking maybe um, there are math sites like Prodigy and reading site and they could give us those logins and we could work on that well they they did give us logins right i guess what i'm saying is that that's something that we should be able to to do but what you're struggling with is is the um is being able to focus on the physical work that they have sent home for you to do right okay now why 
we know that you're brilliant, okay? But if you could see him, he's blushing right now. But um, in the work, it isn't something that's like too hard for you or anything like that. Is it? Is it just? Is it just hard to focus right now? Um, it's stressed. Like not stressed. Why can't I speak today? Ah. <laughs> um. It's kind of a big source of stress because I have this. So imagine um a wood board. There's a what a two by four on two stacks of bricks. And there's a 20 pound weight on that, which is the stress of the coronavirus going around and the lockdown. But then in our situation, which um, you might have heard of or heard about, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that adds like another 30, 40 pounds to that board. And that board is really getting stressed. Like it's at the breaking point. And you cannot add any more weight. And then it's like the homework that they send just adds 10, 20 pounds. That's enough to snap the board in half. Okay. Um, so I get it. I get it. That said... Um, you have to do the same thing. Well, as well. But the thing is, you have more experience. You've gone through life longer, so you're not like a wood plank. It's kind of like you're kind of like an iron bolt, a iron pole. So, you, so, so, what you're saying is, I have more ability to cope because I have more life experience yeah. than you do. Okay. What I what I was going to say was. Um, I know that this is challenging and, and I know that we, we have to, uh, we have to work on the, on the schoolwork because it's a requirement. What we just did a little bit ago was Emmett, uh, we have a messaging app, uh, called class dojo that we have access to the, the school and teachers and staff stuff like that. So, uh, Emmett, um, very artfully and, and um, respectfully conveyed his feelings about the homework <laughs> to his teacher. Uh, I haven't heard back yet. Um, but you know, he was suggesting that maybe we can make it just a little bit more fun, something that's more, um, engaging, I guess mm -hmm. that makes it a little bit easier for him to, to focus on this. And, and I get that. And the bottom line is it, nobody has ever been through anything like this before. And so we're all trying to learn as we go. And, uh, none of it is easy, uh, and and we have to be able to adapt as best we can. And you know maybe the approach to the homework right now isn't the best approach, but in the absence of of prior experience to this, we have to learn as we go. So, um, my other question to you, Emmett, is mm -hmm. what what can we do to help make lockdown more tolerable um because we may be stuck here for the foreseeable future um well tips for everyone that's in lockdown if this is after the lockdown and you're just watch and you're just listening to this you don't have to listen to this but you can for future lockdowns <laughs> never know that people from not never mind cut that out <laughs> Um, yeah, do board games, engage with, um, your family, and... Go ahead, I'm sorry. What are you going to say? Well, I was going to say, I know one of the challenges that, that we have in particular is, is that you're not able to see your mom, uh, and your, your grandparents and your aunts and uncles and stuff like that right now because of the lockdown. Um, and so I know that's that's not easy for you or for them. Uh, so I wondered if we had, if you had any suggestions for other families that may be going through something similar. Um, FaceTime. 
you can call, FaceTime. Um, don't we usually use Zoom? We use Zoom, yeah, but FaceTime is for people who have iPhones. But you're talking just like video calling. Yeah. Do you have any other advice for maybe kids who are struggling with the lockdown right now? Not that I can think of. Um, just here's some pretty cool things. I don't want to say that about it, but we're living through history. So maybe that could, like, maybe if you like history, uh, maybe you can say, well, maybe this could be something in history books someday. So just try and keep a, a positive outlook and yeah. know that it's temporary. And uh, I think Emmett and I would both encourage everybody to make sure that they get their information from reliable sources, uh, people in the health, uh, public health profession. Yeah. Uh, make sure you wash your hands. Mm -hmm. You stay. Social distancing is incredibly important. As much of an inconvenience and as painful as it can be to be away from family and friends is very, very important. If you have like some things of hand sanitizer, use soap before you use the hand sanitizer. What do you mean? Um, like, if if you use the bathroom and you have to wash your hands, use soap first. Because it kills the germ, it kills the germs and it washes them away as well. And you can use hand sanitizer if the water shuts off or the power goes out. Okay, you mean, you don't mean use it first. You just mean, like, use soap and water as your first line of... Defense, right? And when you don't have access to soap and water, use yeah. hand sanitizer, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Excellent advice, Emmett. Excellent advice. Um, and just remain calm. Don't panic. And and uh, remember that social distancing, as hard as it is, is yeah. is very very important to help stop the spread of the COVID nineteen virus. So, uh, Emmett. I want to thank you for taking the time to come on the show. You had to walk all the way up the stairs. <laughs> it was so much of me. I will see you next time. Probably. Um, I don't know. Whenever that is. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we have no schedule. What, what's going on? <laughs> all right. Thank you, Emmett. I love you. Bye. Uh, oh, <laughs> come on. You're going to leave me hanging? <laughs> All right. Thanks, Emmett. Love you, too. Bye. All right. So before we close things out uh, for today, and I know this is a much shorter episode than what I normally do, um, but, you know, everybody's dealing with their own things, so guests are a little bit more difficult to come by right now. I have a few things in the works. I'm trying to get some experts on to help um, – Everybody better understand what the coronavirus is, how we can protect ourselves and our family and everyone else in the community. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, but I wanted to just thank Emmett for coming on uh, the show today, because I know um, it's not always easy for him to express himself, uh, but he's very good at doing it. I, I think, especially when it's, when it's something more abstract, he can express himself very well. And, and, uh, I, I just appreciate his input in his, his perspective and his way of viewing the world. And, uh, I, I love all three of my kids, uh, to pieces and I'm just very grateful to have them and to be their dad. And, and it's the best thing in the world for me. So thank you, Emmett. I love you a lot, man. Um, you guys can find me at the autism dad.com. All my social links are at the top of the page. Uh, if you're interested in being a guest, you want to talk about what this is like for your family or whatever, um, you can either send me a, a DM on Twitter or uh, just visit my contact page on the blog and, and send me a message. Um, it might be interesting to hear how other families are dealing with this. Uh, if you're an expert and you want to talk about something related to this, maybe mental health related or how to manage depression or, or things like that while you are uh, on lockdown, uh, that'd be awesome too. Uh, you guys can subscribe to this podcast via your favorite podcasting app. Just do a uh, search for the autism dad and hit subscribe. I really appreciate that. Um, 
in the notes below, I'll have a list of reliable uh, resources uh, for information related to the COVID-19 virus and health and safety precautions and things like that. So uh, you guys can check them out. I encourage you to give them each a follow. Uh, and outside of that, there, there's a link if you want to support the podcast. You can do that if you feel so inclined. Uh, I would appreciate that as well. So uh, I hope you guys remember to please be safe. Take this seriously. Wash your hands. Social distancing is vital to stopping or at least slowing the spread of this disease. So uh, please, 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 please take this seriously. Um, you know, maybe maybe you're healthy and your family is healthy, but not everybody else is. And what you do today matters tomorrow. Uh, people like my son, Gavin, who has a compromised immune system, people who are elderly, who have uh, underlying health conditions, people maybe uh, living with HIV AIDS or, or fighting cancer, all these people may have compromised immune systems. And by, by socially distancing ourselves, uh, we are helping to protect them uh, as well. So please keep that in mind. Uh, I wish you all the very, very best. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will talk to you next week. Autistic kids can sometimes struggle to learn new skills such as riding a bike, reading, or simply having a conversation to a high level of proficiency and automaticity. Brainiac is a brain enhancement program that gets to the root of the problem. It builds stronger brain and body connections that elevate learning capacity within four to six months. Brainiac cross-trains motor movement, visual, auditory, and cognitive thinking connections using fun, interactive video games. Strength and connections allow kids to learn new skills and perform them automatically with more confidence and greater independence. Brainiac is for homes and schools. Visit canoe.com, that's K-I-N-U-U dot com, and be sure to use the code the autism Dad at checkout to save $500. It's a limited time offer and it will expire on May 31st.